I was losing it because people in the uh, Peloton community on the Discord were talking about like the pre-workout that they take. And uh, somebody said, no joke, I drink a pre-workout supplement called Harambe blood. And I said, what on earth is that? And I'm like, I used to, when I lifted, I used a pre-workout supplement. It was called pre-workout. That was, that's it. Pre-workout. It didn't have like a cool name or anything like that. Let me show you um, what happens. I don't know if you're familiar with this current state of pre-workout, but it is the most insane marketing I think that I've ever seen in my entire life. Maybe this is the shit that made Calvin Coolidge. Like, what is the state of pre-workout, man? Look at this. This this is the label. You're putting that shit in your water and shaking it up every morning. Insane lab psychotic. It's got three extracted teeth on the fucking label. This is insanity. Insane lab psychotic Diablo. Like, these are Hellboy collaboration. Like, what is going on, man? Insane way. <laughs> oh, let me tell you. Little Miss Muffet's way, this is not. This is insane labs, insane way. It's for real alpha males only. Cookies and cream flavor, by the way. Insane labs, insane veins, sour apple flavor. Get ready to go gorilla mode and get massive pumps with cherry blackout. Like, what, what? is the state of men's marketing, man. Like, this is not right. They're taking Insane Labs Psychotic Diablo Summer Series with Pennywise the Clown on the, on the front of the bottle. It's for real men only. This ain't your dad's workout supplement. Cherry lemonade flavor, by the way. No ickies here. I looked at the label of one of these, and it said it contained 150 milligrams of Infinergy per scoop. It, what is Infinergy? I'm getting one of my ribs removed this week. This hits close to home. Uh, info, are you Marilyn Manson? Or is this like actually a serious medical concern? In which case I apologize. I, think, I mean, as with everybody else talking right now, the only time I had ever heard about it was the urban legend that Marilyn Manson got one of his ribs removed so that he could suck himself off. Which, if so, that plastic surgeon should uh, lose their license and also receive a medal. Cause that just seems irresponsible, but also kind of sick. Like that's, if, <laughs> if nothing else, it really shows you how far humanity has come. You know, we went from fighting saber tooth tigers just to like keep our species alive. And now they're like, oh yeah, no, sorry. I can't do Saturday. I'm having my ribs removed so that I can suck myself off. Like, that's, you've, you've conquered this planet at that point, I guess. Yes, uh, hi, my name's uh, Dr. Avis, uh, Rent-A-Car, um, is a maiden name, of course. Uh, yeah, I specialize in a unique form of plastic surgery. It's a, a dorsal rib removal for the service of my patients to uh, suck themselves off and come in their own mouths. So for that, I had to, of course, I did my undergrad, and then I took my MCATs, and I did, you know, general uh, studies in my MCATs, and then I, uh, you know, I, my grades were good, so I got into plastic surgery, which is very competitive, and then I apprenticed for uh, 17 years under uh, Dr. Otto Fellatio, and then uh, now I've opened my own practice. I use this, this, this app <laughs> that, like, that Sorry. monitors, that monitors my sleep. Yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. And, like, it records that. Like if I snore or something, so you can keep track of it. And last night at 2.15 a.m. it says sleep talking. In parentheses or in brackets, baby fussing or crying, comma, sleep talking question mark. <laughs> and then this is the sound that played for me when I woke up. <laughs> How do your ass is haunted? I don't know how to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Dude. that is so good i couldn't believe it man they got kermit the frog as bob cratchit dropping like meditations on you know death and in keeping what it means to be alive I mean, we're really bringing the heat with that one they don't make it like muppet christmas carol anymore now shit's all like Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Christmas edition. By the way, 
I was gonna make, I thought the tweet was a little bit too far, so I'm not gonna make it. If you've opened Disney Plus recently, you may have seen the poster for um, the Santa Clauses. They took the Santa Claus starring Tim Allen and they made it worse. It still stars Tim Allen, so that's a big part of that. But they turned it from a movie into an episodic TV show. And then that's another huge knock on Disney Plus. And then the poster of him doing the hero landing, like punching the ground with energy coming out of his hand and his other hand in the air. I, I was going to take a screen cap and I, I swear to you I was going to tweet I would rather kill myself than watch this. But I thought it was too far and lots of people probably got to pay their mortgages as a result of working on the media property. Just because it's bad, that doesn't mean like fuck craft services or whatever. But that was the first thought that popped into my head. And I, it's not true. I would rather watch it than kill myself. And it's not even close. But it, I would rather watch almost anything else than watch that for sure. No backbone. Bro won't even commit <laughs> No backbone. <laughs> it's Peter Sarsgaard. Oh, it is. It's remarkable how bald Peter Sarsgaard looks just like Todd Luizzo. Swordfish, 2001. Now you're in my wheelhouse, motherfucker. Now you're in my fucking wheelhouse. I'm gonna take you to Monster's Ball. I should have I should have abandoned you in a I'm gonna try to abandon you in a in a obscure Travolta. I should have gone like from Paris with love or whatever that movie's called. Just a movie where it's just John Tr Gotti, Gotti, Gotti would have gone crazy. Okay, Sling Blade, Billy Bob Thornton. Um, give me Armageddon. I know you're going to think these are softballs, but my ass is getting back to John Travolta. If I see a movie with John Travolta in it, I'm abandoning your ass. Pulp Fiction. Okay, that has John Travolta in it. Welcome to Gotti. What are you going to do, brother? What are you going to You walked right into my trap. There's no way out of Gotti. Just ask John Travolta. Hold. I've seen Gotti. I can't think of another actor in Gotti, okay? We win these. You excited about GTA 6? I want to preface this by saying that I think all of the Grand Theft Auto games that I've played, 3, 4, Vice City, and 5, are all great games and a lot of fun. But I do sometimes feel like, I, I talked about it in the Discord today, I sometimes feel like I'm taking insane pills. When a trailer comes out and everybody is like, this is the future of video games. Like this is a serious game for serious people. Like this is gonna elevate the medium. And then when you play it, you're like driving a Toyota Prius off a ramp downtown and like shooting a submachine gun out your driver's side window while doing it and like you it, it's such a weird thing for me because you like i i guess i'm a, a bit of a luddo narrative dissonance andy which i apologize for because it's insufferable but i love when like grand theft auto 5 has some missions that are like check it out this is like a michael mann movie this is like a martin scorsese movie but you're like buddy like, on the way here, I committed 15 murders. Like, I ran over 20 people just getting to the mission. And then now on the mission, it's like, no, no, no. Now it's like cinematic and serious, and this is a game for grown-ups. So I'm like, skirt, poom, ting, tung, tung. Like hijacking an airplane, jumping out, parachuting into downtown Los Angeles. Then I land, and they're like, so we're going to do, we got to be very quiet when we do this heist on the Silicon Valley Bank, okay? Some people are vibe enhancers. Some people are vibe destroyers. I'm a vibe preserver. If I show up and you're uh, eating edibles and listening to Thievery Corporation, I'm not gonna blow that up for you. If you show up and you're listening to LMFAO and taking shots, I'll preserve the vibe. What if you became part of a cannibal cult? I would, I would preserve the vibe. I'm just, I mean, it's just me being true to myself. Many of you would preserve the vibe too, but you're just too cowardly to admit it. My ass is not getting eaten because I want to like be self-righteous in that situation. I would rather be alive. But like the whole, I wouldn't, I would tell myself, despite the effects being the same, I would tell myself I'm better than the other cannibals. Cause I would be like, oh, they're doing it cause they want to. I'm only doing it cause I have to. I would probably rise through the damn ranks too. I would be like, that guy looks delicious. <laughs> Cause if I'm gonna eat a person, I wanna be like high up on the totem pole. I don't wanna have to eat any like human organ meat. I think 
If me personally, if I had to choose, I would say probably like the thigh. I'd have to imagine the thigh would be close to the best. Yeah, that's true. I'm bald to begin with. Can I tell you, this is true, by the way. I swear it to you. I had a dream last night that I went bald. And I don't know how to articulate it to you because I know that it sounds insane because I'm already bald. But I know that in my dream, I like, I knew in my dream that I was bald. It wasn't like I dreamt that I had like a cool head of hair. Like I knew I was bald, but I like was in a gas station bathroom or something. And I went like this in the mirror and I had like some wispy sort of hair here and a big bald spot in the middle. And I woke up feeling like fucked up like emotionally a little shattered like I, for about a minute after i woke up i was like i'm fucking going bald bro it was it was a crazy dream like it, it played on my feelings despite the fact that i've already gone through it's the first time i've ever had like a bald trauma dream it's so weird it's also like so our daughter's been like a little sick so she's been sleeping in my spot on the bed and i've been sleeping on the couch just so that she can get good rest so I've been having weird couch dreams. This cannot be a real game, bro. Why don't you go back to Twitter and be confused about how Baldur's Gate 3 won Game of the Year over Spider-Man 3. Oh, in Baldur's Gate 3, you don't even jump in the air and swing on top of the Empire State Building using cybernetic webs you shoot out from your wrist. Bro, let me spoil it for you. At the end of the day, every video game is pushing a button, okay? It's basically the same as working in a wastewater treatment plant. The only thing that changes is the set dressing. So if you're gonna actually be out here with like a 14 year old ego, it's like, well, when I press the buttons, I shoot out a big ball of lightning from my hands. When you press buttons in this game, all you do is get an emoji. It's the same thing, okay? You have no idea what you're talking about. I've been doing this since you were wearing dungarees. Look at the plus twos, how does it make you feel? The only thing that's real is the arena of rhetoric, argument, and debate. And you're getting trounced right now. Oh, man. <laughs> well, the best button you can press right now? Probably Alt F4, my brother. Get out of here! Okay. Now let me figure out what emoji I'm going to add here. By the way, the audacity of the Lion, the Witch, and the audacity of this bitch, Elvis Presley. Dude writes a song, Suspicious Minds, that's like... I can't be married to you if you think I'm cheating on you. And then that motherfucker was cheating on Priscilla, like, nonstop. Dude, dude literally made a... He went to number one on the Billboard Hot 200 with a gaslight anthem. We can't go on together with suspicious minds. Bro, it's not a suspicious... You were doing the shit that she's accusing you of doing, bro! This bit would have crushed in 1973. The crazy thing is, this is the right time for the bit. In 1973, someone would have shot and killed me for insulting Elvis. It's only because of the hard work of Sofia Coppola that I'm able to say the truth in the modern day. You would get killed if you said stuff about Taylor Swift or BTS? Well, luckily that's not gonna happen because I think that those are two artists whose output I respect. What am I gonna accuse BTS of? Oh, they said they're smooth like butter, but actually they're only as smooth as margarine? in her shoes, Tony Collette. I'd rather not use the cast lifeline on this. I will hit you with um, Little Miss Sunshine. <laughs> I'll hit you with Hereditary. I'm trying to think, oh, nothing comes to the top of my mind. The boss, the boss one, the boss, the bad boss. Muriel's wedding. It's Australian. Uh, Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles. Crocodile Dundee too. Crocodile Dundee. Um, Australia. Yes! <laughs> I knew it. I do get annoyed sometimes when people say like, oh, I don't want to go to heaven if it's real. I'd rather be in hell with all the interesting people. You could catch my ass in heaven with a bunch of boring motherfuckers not having like my skin flayed off for eternity and like burning alive and being like put on a spit and rotated for millions of years. I'll be up there like kind of yawning and being like, oh, and then what happened? You would not catch my ass undergoing like the most awful forms of torture I could ever imagine, but I'll be like, ah, <laughs> at least I'm next to Elvis. At least Elvis is down here with me. Trolls 3 has Island in the Sun. 
No disrespect, but we're not built the same. If they, if trolls, if you hate trolls, and then they play a song that you like, you should hate trolls more for defiling an original that you enjoy. You should be like, I had a problem with it when it was LMFAO songs that fucking sucked, but now that they went for Island in the Sun, it's personal. Instead, you're out here like, they won me back when they played a song I recognize. That's their whole thing, bro. Do you hate Weird Al? No, I think it's a little cringe when you pass them on the aux cable and then they put on, you know, Amish Paradise. I don't hate Weird Al. Weird Al is transforming a song into a parody that's an original work that says something different than the original. This one is just like, hey, remember that song from 10 years ago? What if Anna Kendrick sang Gangnam Style? Like, is fucking... What if? What if? What if nobody fucking cared? Unless they were three years old, which admittedly is the target audience, but... I'm just saying, as an adult, you're not going to catch me being like, oh, the Trolls movies are based, you know? Muppet Christmas Carol, kind of based. Trolls World Tour. We will not be there no matter what, unless my kid wants to see it, in which case we will be there no matter what. Anna Kendrick has a nice voice, though. Bro, it's fucking 2023. Everyone has a nice voice. Do something original, man. Do, so, do something cool. If I wanted to see people sing songs they didn't write, I'd fucking go to the Elton John concert, okay? It's not an insult to Sir Elton. He didn't write the songs. Bernie Taupin wrote the songs. Why are you in NL's chat defending a Trolls movie? Listen, that's, you're asking the real, you're asking the questions I'm not allowed to ask. How are there so many like 27 year old motherfuckers on Twitter that are posting like essays about Family Guy every day? Like how did this, they should be in the club, bro. Kind of like, kind of like chat. Oh, 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 guys! Just let my sanity come back for a second. <laughs> I just gotta take a look. <laughs> Oh no, 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 I got to, oh man, it's a long trip, I just got to get as much loot as I can, oh, oh no, the bees, is this Adam's Family Christmas? Adam's Family theme song, no? Indie RPG overworld theme be like, not overworld, sorry. First town, first town. Welcome to Harp Town. You'll find an herbalist at the end of the street that will grant you access to potions and other such salves if anything ails you. There's a general grocer just in front of us. That's where we all congregate and buy our foodstuffs. There's also a materia shop just to the south if you should find yourself in need of magic. Sorry. I gotta, I gotta right? slow down. I'm getting too bald. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta take this. Your mom just called. Oh. Call me That's Cantankerous. Out, I be Tinky Winky. I'm gonna push your old ass down the stairs like a slinky. Ooh. Hey. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck? Very good. Hey. What the fuck? <laughs> gears and gear. Some say I'm flashy. Some say I'm intelligent. <laughs> Got more rhymes and pages than a tree ant. <laughs> My mom always says I'm her number one. <laughs> um, she really doesn't. You're the sucker. <laughs> Is it kind of horse or a kind of car? This, I, I'm just gonna give up on this one. I, w there's no shot you ever would have seen me guess Flicka. There is a 0% a chance that one's, I don't think I've ever heard of it and it has very little to do with the context because I'm assuming it's the name of the horse. <laughs> Stop it. Stop what? Talking. Stop talking? Yeah. What? I gotta talk, that's my work. Based, based, based. I don't know, man. It's, I, what's crazy is that I actually think it's basically like a survival 
mechanism. Like people act like I'm the weird one, but like the more alike to a human being that an animal is, the more I find it like tolerable and, and maybe even precious, you know? Pretty much all mammals, I'm okay with. I got no problem with any mammal, I think. Yeah, there's some mammals that are like a little weird, but I'm like, eh, you know, we're all in this together. It's when the it, fish, it's like some fish I'm okay with, but once you get into like the really weird deep sea ones, I'm like, no thanks. And then the bug kingdom and the uh, nematodes and uh, st what about, uh, what are they called? Mollusks, like anything like that, anything that's like goo with a shell, the older I get, the more I'm like, this, you do you, brother, but stay out of my fucking business, okay? Like a jellyfish freak me out, man. I know this is like old, I'm not just trying to rehash a bit. This is like my life. This is inside of my brain. A jellyfish is like the most detestable creature on planet Earth. They're, oh, they're beautiful. They're majestic. It's a fucking electric bag in the water. I'm not even worried about being stung. It's the fact that it's just a bag responding to its environment. Like, that's not right, bro. Is that not cool? Yeah, it's cool in the same way that, like, you know, hereditary is cool. It makes me feel a little icky. Yeah, they should not be responding to their environment. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, in my head, because I'm just one guy, but you know, what makes me the king of the jellyfish? My brain, when I, when I know that a jellyfish responds to its environment, I'm like, you shouldn't be doing that. You're a bag. They've been around longer than you. Yeah, and they got, like, fuck all the show for it. C-section is very good. My mom at the hospital when she saw my huge fucking head on the ultrasound. All of them lead to Rome. Rhodes. Judy in the Bond films. Red, white, and blue in its. USA. Dine or dash. Okay. Can you do the real crossword? No, it takes like 40 minutes. New York Times is full of eggheads, so it'll always be like, this secretary of state in 1811, or the sound you make when you stub your toe in a blender. And then you got to look it up and it's like, oh, there was a guy named Bill Youch. I've always tipped a little bit for takeout. I think like even in college, I would tip like 10%. Not as much as in store, but I would, I would tip for takeout. And part of it is just being honest with myself. I'm already tipping for no reason other than the fact that if I don't tip, people will be mad at me. It's not like when I sit down in a restaurant, I'm like, Oh, you're doing like the really hard work of refilling my glass of water and like carrying the plate out to me. Like that stuff is, I'm not saying it's not work. I'm just saying like it doesn't bring much value to me personally. Like if they just put the plate out at the front and said your food's here, like I got no problem walking up and getting it myself. So on an intellectual level, I'm already tipping for no reason whatsoever. I'm tipping because it's the custom of the place where I live. So it's just honest for me to tip on takeout because I'm not really paying you to fill up my glass of water anyway. I'm paying you because that's what you do when you go out to a restaurant is you tip. It's what we've all agreed upon, whether via inertia or, you know, whatever other reason. But then after COVID, I also started tipping more for takeout because I want the businesses in my neighborhood to continue to exist and not just be replaced by Cactus Club, Earl's, et cetera, et cetera. So I've started tipping like 20%, sometimes even a little bit more for takeout at local businesses because I want the business, if possible, to have every chance to survive longer and not just become like the next Boston pizza or something like that. So. And then if it goes out of business, it's not like I'm going to be like, oh, I really wish I could get those tips back. I'll be like, ah, well, you know, it's the, it's the way of the world. Either way, you're supporting, you know, like uh, people in your community. Which is why I don't tip when I eat at restaurants in America. Because I don't live there. So it's not really like, it's not going to enrich my local environment as a result. I just don't care. I'm just, I'm there for a good time, not a long time. If, 
If those restaurants go out of business, what do I, I may never be in Bellingham ever again. I'm joking. I mean, I may never be in Bellingham ever again. God willing, but I do tip as well in the United States of America because I don't want to get killed, okay? Like, there's always a good reason to tip. Uh-oh. Oh, no, dude, she's on me. She's on me. She's on me. Oh! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Holy shit! Whoa! Whoa, dude. That's Corey's head under the table. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> You ever wonder how much of uh, like conversation on Twitch is just lost to like meaningless sidetrack, like out of context conversations, bait, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera? Like we could be learning so much about society and so much about each other if it weren't for people just like trying to get a quick hit of dopamine instead by like lying. <laughs> And then people will be like, male loneliness is real. Then when they get a chance to type, they're like, did you see a uh, thing I made up? Says the straw man champion. See, there you go again. I've never won a straw man championship. Now you're just going and telling lies to get a, a quick hit of dopamine. But it's just a sugar rush, bro. It's not, gonna, it's not real energy. It's not going to replace real human companionship. Do delirium? Hey, the Elguiga. No. I'll ask you questions about the fucking Guy Fox model of relative risk return in a low interest rate environment. You leave the entertainment to me, buddy. It's crazy, dude. Pornography websites, you know how they release that map that's like, here's the fetishes of like everybody uh, in the United States based on their state? They should release like the top, top trends on November 30th versus like December 1st. If No Nut November is a real phenomenon, the D-Gens who are jerking it November 30th, I'm sure it's fucked up. Stuck, stepsister, internal cum explosion, like just fucking gross stuff. I bet December 1st is like the only day of the year where number one is just like sex. <laughs> they haven't had release in a month. They're just like, ah! Tits. Doom, like Instalock. One tab, not looking at any of the related videos. <laughs> On the home screen. They're coming to the damn ad. He's one tapped. He's, he's one, he's tapped, he's tapped, bro. He's tapped, he's hiding in the blonde tag. Go get him. I saw him sprint to the blonde tag. We want to go like one layer abstracted from where I was before. 10 things I hate about you. I start with a Spider-Man. Three. I start with a Spider-Man 2. No links. Oh, right, because we got to go to Kirsten Dunst first. <laughs> I forgot about it. We got to get to Kirsten Dunst first. And then we hope to get them into it. We play Spider-Man. Yeah, okay. And then we play Spider-Man 3 because I think it's unlikely. Oh, Tobey Maguire is banned by my opponent. Okay, well, then we get out via the Sam Raimi uh, side door. We played Drag Me to Hell starring Justin Long and Allison Lohman. Okay, nice. You, you almost fell into my trap. Yo, don't, don't embarrass yourself. Your trap is my trap, okay? Oh, oh, I blocked Sam Raimi. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I blocked Sam Raimi. You think you lured me into the maze? I'm the Minotaur! It is, it, I was thinking about this the other day, you know, like every hack comedian's favorite joke? Imagine, who, can you imagine what it was like, the first guy who drank milk? Can you imagine, he was like, look at that thing, I'm gonna go suck on it, am I right? That's so weird. I was thinking about it the other day, the joke doesn't make any fucking sense, bro. You think like, ancient people didn't know what milk was? They were sucking on titties the day they came out of the womb. I think they were like, whoa, wouldn't it be weird if we drank that? You fucking already drank it, bozo. You drank it for like probably five years when you came out because it's not like they were starting to eat dinosaur chicken nuggets in the year negative 75,000. It's like the least weird thing they can eat. It's like way weirder that they were like, let's kill the thing and eat its flesh. <laughs> it's like it's already making the stuff that can make you grow big and there you're like look at you know that thing that like feeds us let's fucking kill it and eat it this time that's way weirder bro i was laughing because uh we were talking in the peloton discord about how like oh well, i i said like 
you have to go really hard on your FTP test. And then someone said, yeah, no problem. I'll just tell my toddler that I'm too sore to play tag later. And I say, you know how it is. You just have to play tag anyway. And then I relayed an anecdote from when I was hanging out with her last night. I'm like so tired. And she's like, let's go lay on the bed. And then we go to my bedroom. She lays on the bed. I lay next to her and she says, the, the bed is for girls only. And I say, okay, what should daddy do? And then she says, um, you can jump up and down on the floor. <laughs> okay, honey. This is like one eye, like 80% closed. She's not even looking. She's got like the blanket over her head. If you stop, she's like, why'd you stop? And you're like, oh.